Hey everyone, it's Kirsten, and I really hope that you're looking forward to this video as much as I am because we are going to go on a little trip down memory lane. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey growing up as a young aspiring professional ballerina, uh, and I'm gonna be including some fun pictures, a few blasts from the past, if you will, um, to kind of just give you some visuals on what it was like for me growing up, and I'm also going to be sharing um, some advice that I would give my younger self. So I'm sure that this will really connect with those of you who are currently in the aspiring phase towards becoming professional dancers. If that is your pursuit in life, this will definitely help you. And hey, even if you are currently a professional dancer, we all have further to go in our journey, and so I think you will find some really helpful insights in this video. Now, if you have no idea who I am, if you're brand new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kirsten, and I am a former professional dancer, and I currently work as a mindset coach, helping ballet dancers all over the world through online private coaching overcome deep insecurities and struggles within their ballet journey so I can also help them reform their mindset and give them the strategies to overcome these struggles and become their personal best. I love drawing out people's potential and holding them to it so that they can create success on their own terms. Before we get into the rest of the video, I also wanted to say that if you haven't heard yet, the Come Back Stronger course, which is the online program I'm creating for injured dancers to make a full and successful recovery is launching officially on Wednesday, November 13th. I'm so excited about this because again, if you haven't heard, where where have you been? Where have you been on my channel? <laughs> but if you haven't heard about this, it's the online program I've specifically designed to help injured dancers to walk them through the recovery process so that they can have the strategies and the community support to overcome the biggest challenges that dancers face in recovery and the biggest confusions. I clear up that confusion. I give you the support and the guidance that you need to come through the recovery process strong and with confidence, knowing that you are doing everything you can to make a successful recovery. I give all that to you in this program. So I can't wait for the launch. I'm so excited about it. And in the meantime, go ahead and click the link below to visit the comebackstrongercourse.com. That's where you could find all the specifics of the program. And there's a link on that page to uh, enter your email address. You will also receive an exclusive freebie PDF guide. It'll give you a little taste of the course content. Um, and you will also receive an exclusive invitation to get access to the course content early at a discount. There are only a hundred spots available for this, so you're gonna wanna check that out. You're going to wanna add your email address to join my email community because that is the only place this exclusive opportunity will be available. All the stuff you need to know is in the description box, it's in the links, so don't freak out. I know it's a lot of detail, but um, housekeeping over. Can't wait for the launch. Now let's get into the rest of this video. So I'm gonna give you a little context on my background. And um, I know that you will particularly relate to this if you also came from a very casual training environment in a smaller city. I definitely didn't grow up in a tiny town. I, I'm from South Texas, but I certainly didn't have like abundant ballet opportunities available to me and like serious professional training. So I discovered at 14, 13, yeah, 13 years old that I really wanted to be a professional dancer. And that is when my eyes were really open to everything I was gonna have to do to get there. And it was overwhelming. And I felt so far from that goal, but so passionate about making ballet like my whole life. So the advice I'm really going to be um, giving in this video to anyone who's like me is gonna be geared towards, um, like for instance, coming from a smaller, more humble training background um, and trying to work my way up. Also, if you're like me, you had have or are struggling to know how to care for yourself and avoid injuries. You're also, if you're like me, struggling with how to um, care for yourself when you do get injured, like figuring out what to do with that. Um, I was completely clueless when I was younger and that led to a vicious cycle of like injury and re-injury, injury and re-injury. 
not knowing like when to push myself and push through the injury and the pain and when to back off, I literally had no idea what I was doing. And other things I struggled with were having moments of confidence where I could like go out and do the big auditions. And, you know, I had enough audacity to really pursue my dreams, but there were so many times, especially as I got into my later, later teens, when I became actually really timid and afraid of putting myself out there and taking advantage of those unique opportunities to be seen, like when I could stand in the front or raise my hand to demonstrate a combination or say, I know this, or step into an understudy position, like when one girl has to step out of rehearsal or something. There were a lot of opportunities like that that I just let pass me by because I was too insecure to really take advantage of them and to say, you know what, I'm ready to be seen. I was really afraid of that. There were also times where I made excuses for myself to like prevent myself from working as hard as I possibly could. Now, I was generally a very hard worker. I still am. But there were a lot of times where I just got tired in my journey. And I remember, especially in college, I would... Uh, or no, in my late teens as well, like I would make excuses uh, saying like, oh, my knee hurts today and I wouldn't keep practicing or I wouldn't do my physical therapy exercises. You know, there were a lot of times where I just made excuses um, in order to just kind of bow out and not have to work as hard. There was also a time when I had such low confidence in myself to where I even, I could hardly trust myself to pull off like the most basic combinations or basic pieces in rehearsal. Um, and even if I could pull them off, my level of consistency in my performance was all over the place because I would be having a decent day and then I would get such doubt that I could do it the same way again that it was kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like I would just mess up on the stupidest things because I just, I was spending so much time in my head, like doubting myself instead of focusing on what the heck I was doing. So those are a few of the things I went through. Comment down below if you relate. I'm sure a lot of you do. And all those things, they kind of came and they went. Like though none of those were consistent. Like I had a lot of times where I was super confident and then, um, one thing or another would happen and my confidence would just completely tank. Uh, a lot of my mentality was dictated by my situation, which is something I definitely help my clients right now, like step away from to have like a level of consistency in their mentality and their ability to perform and in their confidence instead of letting their confidence um, and level ability to perform, like be completely dictated by the situation. A lot of that ability to perform consistently and to feel consistently good is coming from your noggin and like what you put your confidence in, not necessarily like your situation. Okay, the way I'm going to structure the rest of this video is that I'm going to tell you some things that I'm actually really proud of myself for. And then I'm going to talk to you about some like honest regrets I have. I think it's okay to have regrets. I know that's like unpopular these days. For me, I like to acknowledge how I could have done things better. And Maybe the word regret has a very different connotation to you than it does to me. For me, it's not like this huge weight or burden I carry around on me all the time, like this deep regret that I could have done things differently and I didn't and so my life is ruined. That's not how I think about it. When I talk about regrets, I just mean here are some ways that if I could go back and do it again, I would do this differently. I would change this. And then after I talk about those two things, what I'm proud of, what I kind of regret, then I'm going to break down kind of through that context, what advice I would give my younger self. So the first thing I'm really proud of is that I worked my way up from a really small studio. And I'm really proud of that because being um, on track to becoming a professional dancer was just not something that was very normal or even like blatantly encouraged in my studio growing up. And so I was totally oblivious to how the whole process worked. I literally had no idea until I just was talking to one friend who was talking about how she got into Houston Ballet Academy. And I was like, 
what? I wish I could get in. How did you get in? And she was like, I auditioned. <laughs> My whole journey was kind of just like just figuring out the next step. But I did know that the goal was meaningful enough for me to work towards, even when I didn't have total clarity on like how the whole process worked. So I'm proud of myself for figuring things out and for kind of making my own way. I'm also proud that I did really devote myself to research. I would read all the magazines. Um, I started watching YouTube videos when that became popular in my teenage years. Um, I did as much research as I possibly could. The other thing I'm proud of is that when I did research good year-round programs and summer programs and all this stuff and I was figuring it all out, um, I'm proud of the fact that I, my twin sister was also pursuing a career with me. And um, we both um, would just go audition for the best programs we could find. And I'm realizing more as I get older, like that's not a given. Usually as um, we kind of tiptoe our way into training programs of any kind, it's normal for a lot of people to consider their skill level and to exclude themselves from just trying for the best or kind of their their stretch goal, like the maybe unachievable outcome. A lot of us hold ourselves back from going and putting ourselves out there for that, like maybe that chance that we would get into School of American Ballet or Pacific Northwest Ballet, San Francisco Ballet. But it just didn't occur to me to not try for the best when I was young because I thought, well, I at least want to know if I can get in. I want to know what kind of dancer does get in so I could try to become like that. And so I'm really proud of that mentality to just go for the best and see what happened. And from that, I did get into some of those programs. And yeah, I was in some cases, I got into some of the higher levels, but I was like the worst one there. And I'm proud that at least I was brave enough to be the worst of the best, you know? And I think that really served me. I'm also proud of the fact that I had this resilience and this vigilance to stick through some really, really hard times, especially when I was at Houston Ballet Academy. My second year there, um, after a great first year, my second year was very hard. It was one of the hardest years of my life um, for a lot of reasons I don't have time to go into right now. But um, I'm proud of myself for really sticking through it because it was normal at that time in the academy for girls in the top level that I was in to like for our class size to narrow down by at least a third by the end of the year a lot of girls would just quit it was very hard they would either quit ballet or move back home or go find another place to train understandably and I don't see that as cowardice at all I actually think that was quite brave of them but for me what brave meant at the time was sticking through until the end and seeing my commitment through. And so I'm proud of myself that I really did stick through that and I dealt with a lot to make it to the end of the year. So I am proud of that. I'm also proud that I maintained my integrity t integrity throughout my training. That was something that was uh, really valued in my family growing up, like being a person of integrity, forming good relationships with um, authority figures, and being kind and respectful to my peers. That was always a big deal to me. And so I did have what it looked like for me to live with integrity in my training was to be respectful. And I wasn't always perfect at this, but I'm proud of myself that that was my intention. And it ended up being something that I was kind of known for in any sort of training environment I was in. My teachers usually liked working with me because I was respectful to them. But on the other side of that coin, I'm really proud that I stuck up for myself when I really needed to because there were some times when teachers really did not treat me uh, as they should. And it wasn't just about me. Like some of the ways that I was treated in really serious training environments, I believe should not be, should not be allowed. I'll just say that. I don't want to say something too extreme, but it wasn't right. And I'm proud of myself that I did stand up for myself in those moments. The last two things are that I'm proud that I used some of my hardest um, experiences as a dancer to learn from them and to grow as a result of the hard experience instead of letting them destroy me. 
I'm really proud of that. I think that's also something my parents kind of drilled into me. And I'm really grateful that they did because it served me a lot. And I'm also proud that, um, like, as an example, my sister and I started this YouTube channel because something I like that I did and that I still do is that whenever I learn something good, I can be very evangelistic about it. I want to share what I know to help other people. And some of the biggest things I've ever learned that I think are helpful have come from some of my biggest challenges in life. So I'm proud that I've not only learned to use hard experiences to grow for myself, but I don't usually just stop at letting it grow me. I usually want to share that growth with other people. So maybe someone else who's going through the same thing could get support that they need. And the last thing is that I'm really proud of my artistry. That's something I valued from a young age. And that is something I think I did learn from my uh, training when I was really young, even though it wasn't like pre-professional awesome training. I had to ask for more opportunities. I'm glad that it was at least available to me to dance almost every day or sometimes every day. And I got to perform. I did have plenty of opportunities. I don't want to make it seem like I had nothing, but I always asked for more instead of just accepting what I did have. So I'm proud of that. And I would say that I'm, I'm proud of my focus on growing my artistry throughout all of my training. That's something a lot of dancers forget. They're just trying to be perfect technically. And I remember that, well, still, this is kind of how I feel. Um, being an artist has always been something that brings me more joy in my dancing. If I focus only on just being a perfect dancer or like technically or just in my physique or whatever, I kind of lose that joy a little bit. And so I'm, I'm proud that I've always invested in becoming a better artist. Now, here are some, uh, just a couple of regrets. <laughs> some things that if I could go back and do it differently, I would do it differently. And I think some of you guys who are kind of in that transitional part of your journey now, maybe transitioning from trading into one day a professional career, you can really learn from these regrets. So the first thing I regret is not putting myself out there more for opportunities like, uh, for instance, when one dancer is missing from a rehearsal or they're injured or they have to step out. I re regret not being the kind of dancer who would just automatically raise their hand and say, I can fill in for that part. Or being that dancer who, like when a teacher at a summer program or an audition or something would be like, who can show this combination? I regret not well, more often being that dancer who's like, yes, me. I watched a lot of other dancers in my hesitation raise their hand and get opportunities and get opportunities to understudy. And then they got picked for the show, which led to impressing the director, which led to a contract. I had to learn that they, the girl who raised her hand and got the opportunity, it's not because she's necessarily special. No one called on her she raised her hand probably feeling the exact same fear that I did in that moment, but she was willing to go try anyway and risk making a couple mistakes for the chance to maybe show what she can do right. And that's something I just, I wasn't brave enough to always do. And I regret not doing it. You know, I, I really think that I could have had more opportunities as a dancer if I had stepped up to the plate a bit more and not worried so much about showing my flaws. Rather, I wish I had the mentality of people are going to see my mistakes no matter what. They're going to see my imperfections, but will I step up and show them what I want to show them? Will I show them my talent? Maybe they haven't noticed before. So let me give them the opportunity to see my talent. The other thing I regret is um, not seeking out mental support. I really do wish that um, I was pursuing a therapy or a coach. Like if coaching for ballet dancers were a thing when I was younger, I wish I knew about it. I wish I did it. Um, now I can't say that's like a real regret because Honestly, I think I'm one of the first people to become a coach, a mindset coach for ballet dancers. There are health coaches. That's awesome. That is super needed. But I wish that I at least sought out therapy because that is, that is something that's been available for a long time. It, it held me back from like showing all of myself. I kind of 
had so many triggers from my past of having little tiny flaws in me like ripped to shreds and it felt those those like corrections and lectures felt so personal that it kind of caused me since I didn't deal with them or talk through them with someone it really caused me to just retreat and to not like come forward until I felt perfect I mean, if coaching were a thing, I would have loved to do that because what I like about coaching is that, yes, you can resolve some, um, like with some forms of coaching, like some of my training, I do know how to resolve some traumas. So that is good. Um, but what I like about coaching is it focuses on resolving some insecurities, some doubts and doing whatever work you need to do to get to an optimal mental state. But then I love how, at least in my practice, I help dancers understand their strengths. I help them set bigger goals and to draw the dots to like understand how they can actually achieve it. I get them into action. I get them into an understanding of what they are capable of and how they can start to step into that. And it's an incredibly confidence building. And I've seen it dramatically change the way dancers feel about themselves and the way they show up in the studio, even the way they feel in their bodies. Like when you have a mentality of fear all the time, it changes your physiology. It changes the way you dance. And so I really love what I'm able to do with clients now because I'm able to help them with some emotional issues and then move them forward instead of just kind of focusing on resolving the past pain. So I'm sad that I didn't get that as a dancer. I think it really would have changed my journey, but I am glad that I get to provide that help to dancers now. And if you're someone who's dealing with, um, you know, the result of insecurities that came from like really shame-based teaching methods or if you're just constantly holding yourself back like I was, kind of that self-sabotage, um, especially with audition season, if you want to resolve that, just go to my website, kirstenkemp.com. It's linked down below and you can read about my services and schedule a complimentary consultation. It really means a lot to me to be able to provide this individual support to dancers because I know it's so needed. And there are some other little regrets I have that are probably going to come up in my advice that I would give to my younger self. So I'll just start jumping into that. One big thing I would really have loved to tell myself from what I know now is um, to understand the sacrifices I'm making in order to achieve a short-term goal. I, I wish I had more foresight and more of a more of a line of thought like, hmm, how are the sacrifices I'm making now going to affect me in my future? But the whole thing with that is that when you get so used to valuing short-term wins one after another, you might think, oh, I'm just going to get through this show. I don't care if my Achilles tendon is holding on by a thread. I'm just going to get through it. If you have that mentality, chances are you're going to immediately find another short-term goal or short-term excuse to not take care of yourself. I was so afraid of losing opportunities or like having my career ruined by choosing to sit out of a show because I was injured. I pushed through that injury thinking, you know, I bet if I choose to sit out, I won't get hired. What ended up happening is I didn't get hired anyway because I couldn't dance because I couldn't straighten my leg because my leg never got better, you know? And so not only did I not get the contract, I also couldn't dance for a really long time. I wasn't thinking of how the alternative could also screw me over, especially in the long term. There are so many sacrifices I made like that. I wish that uh, like leaders, teachers educators, whatever, in ballet would encourage students to consider what they're doing in the long term, whether it be like if you're depriving yourself of food consistently to look a certain way, you might lose some weight and look perfect or whatever for a show or for your audition pictures. But what are you doing to yourself in the long term? And is that worth it? The other piece of advice I would definitely give myself and all of you is that there is some pain that you're just going to have to push through, but I believe eventually we get to know the kind of pain that's serious and the kind of pain that's saying, hey, stop, take a break. And I wish that 
I had gone with my gut because I knew that this injury wasn't just going to get better. The kind of trend I'd seen is just be tough enough to push through the pain and your injuries will go away and you'll be successful. That's a bunch of baloney. We need to be considering our health and we need to get to know the signs our body is giving us. I would say get to know those pain signals in the Come Back Stronger course, the online program for injured dancers, walking them through the recovery process. Um, That program that I'm developing and launching this November 13th, um, it does include a lot of guidance about understanding your body's pain signals, what they tend to mean, creating your own pain scale. So you can have a decision-making process to kind of know and discern like, when is it time to sit out? When is it time to push? How far is pushing too far? Um, when do I just need to push harder? There can be a lot of confusion for dancers around that. So in that course, I do really clear those things up, but I'd say for those of you who aren't injured right now and you don't know the course or you're not going to enroll in the course right now, get to know your body's different pain signals. And um, the next point that kind of connects to this point is When you are really hurting and you're clearly injured, don't just put some ice on it and take some ibuprofen and hope that your pain goes away. And then think that when your pain does go away, you're better. Not necessarily. I wish I did this and I want to tell all you guys um, that you need to take those pain signals as a sign to get stronger in specific ways, to maybe correct some misalignments in your body, to strengthen your technique, um, and to protect yourself and your joints from future injury. Getting stronger really is the answer, not just waiting until your pain goes away. We are not healed from injury when the pain is gone. We're healed when we get strong enough to prevent that injury from happening over and over and over again. You have to stop the cycle before it happens. Don't just think that each injury is like an isolated incident and it's just not going to happen again. Moving away from some injury related advice, I would say to my younger self that the people that are going to hurt you the most and cause you the most, like the biggest challenges in your journey are the people that you really have to thank for what you're doing in life now and the ways that you've grown and your values, you know, even though I would say I do not agree with some of the ways I was treated as a younger dancer, I can disagree and also say thank you to those people and those challenges for making me the person I am today. And so because I went through that and I went through it alone, I saw the opportunity for some, for like me to step up and be that person who supports dancers and be that person who creates a program for injured dancers to walk them through that super painful and confusing process I went through alone. So I am able to look back on all those challenges and say, thank you. I'm glad that happened, even though it was terrible at the time. So I would say to you guys, If you're going through a struggle right now, you might not see the payoff for years. And that is hard, but it's okay. But do hold out the faith that there's something valuable that this pain is teaching you that the good times couldn't. And you can use that for your future and to build a future for yourself instead of just becoming a victim to what happened to you. I would also say to my younger self, be the strongest you, not just the skinniest you. You see, when I was a younger teenager, YouTube was just becoming popular and I didn't, like there was no Claudia Dean at that point giving technique tips. There was no Catherine Morgan on YouTube. She was in her career at that time. There weren't so many resources online for me to watch professional dancers do what they did. Um, to watch them dance and to analyze their technique or to learn from people who are experts in the field. There wasn't really that. And so I would just look at pictures of dancers in from Russia, like in Point Magazine or something like that, and they would be incredibly thin. And so I just saw these pictures and I thought, well, I guess in order to be a professional, I need to look like them. 
Meanwhile, I wasn't acknowledging the differences in my body and their body just naturally, and I wasn't focusing on becoming necessarily a stronger dancer. I was focused on the tricks and what I looked like. And so I would tell myself and you guys who are younger, focus on becoming the strongest, most lovely you, not a copycat of someone else who's 10 years older than you with a different set of genes, a different bone structure. Don't focus on just looking like them. Dance like your personal best, not like their highlight reel and their picture in a magazine. One of the biggest points that I want to share with you guys, and I think it's definitely my favorite, is that I would tell myself to not be afraid to take risks in exchange for growth and in in exchange for big opportunities. What I mean by that is so many people like myself, we can be so afraid to step out and to show all of ourselves, including the few mistakes that we're probably going to make. We hold ourselves back and we wait until we're perfect to just put ourselves out there and raise our hand and say, yes, I know the combination. I can step into that part, whatever it is. And like I was sharing earlier, I now think, man, I was just as prepared and probably feeling the same as that dancer that raised their hand, but I was too scared to raise my hand. So I would tell myself, be brave enough to show off your talent, knowing that there are going to be a couple mistakes mixed in and that's okay. But will you be the one that's brave enough to show your talent or will you shrink back because you're too afraid of showing your flaws. We've all got flaws, okay? So you have to be the one that's brave enough to show all of you, including the wonderful parts of you in your dancing. You have to bring that to people. Don't wait to be that one that's scouted and seen from the back of the room and like pulled to the front to show your talent. That day almost never comes for most of us. So I would say just go out there, be bold, be brave enough, and you will get the opportunities that... um, you want. All right, guys. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'll just remind you that the Come Back Stronger course launches on Wednesday, November 13th. And if you want to be one of the 100 dancers that will get early access to the course curriculum starting on Tuesday, uh, November 5th through Tuesday, uh, November 12th, go ahead and follow the link down below enter your email address. You will not only get an email with a coupon code, but you'll also get my free PDF guide on five ways dancers go wrong in the recovery process and how to avoid these mistakes. So you're going to get a taste of the course content plus a coupon code to take advantage of that early access promotion I'll be running. All right, that's it though. I look forward to seeing you guys in next week's video and I want to thank you again for watching. Bye.